الذين يقولون ربنا اخرجنا من هذه القريه الظالم اهلها واجعل لنا واجعل لنا من لدنك وليا واجعل لنا من لدنك نصيرا بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قال رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي امري واحلل عقده من لساني يفقه قولي نحمده ونصلي على رسوله الكريم اشهد ان لا اله الا الله واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله اما بعد السلام عليكم ورحمه الله وبركاته my dear brothers sisters um, you have seen the pictures from masjid al aqsa where unarmed men women and children are standing alone with nothing but their iman to protect themselves and to protect the masjid from the brutal attack by an armed security force they stand alone not out of choice they stand alone because each and every ruler in every state and every army have decided to let them stand alone and they have allowed the zionists to do as they please my dear brothers and sisters you're watching this tonight and you're listening to this tonight because unlike the rulers unlike the puppet rulers in the muslim world you feel the pain you feel the anger you feel the passion and you feel this what you see in masjid al aqsa you feel it because you share the iman of the people of masjid al aqsa and we share that iman because we are one body and we will remain to be one body because we feel the same pain when they suffer we as an ummah need to act we cannot let this happen year after year after year we cannot keep repeating the same actions year after year after year and expect something different to happen and to expect somehow the problem will resolve itself tonight i want to address you with a number of points i want to address some points to you so you understand the nature of the problem and i want to address some points to you so you understand what actions we need to take to solve this problem once and for all so let's understand the nature of the problem first and foremost point number 1 make no mistake of the role of the muslim rulers in this incident or in the occupation of palestine make no mistake about the role of the muslim rulers in what you are witnessing on your tv screens way back in 1917 well before the zionist colonial outpost became a state it only became a state because of the help of the arab leaders at that time in 1917 the british were unable to defeat the ottoman army protecting palestine but when the arab leaders fought alongside the british they allowed the british to occupy palestine and march to jerusalem and occupy jerusalem the zionist colonial terrorist state exists because of the assistance and the help and the support of the muslim rulers in that region they help create it they help support it and they help to maintain it they are the ones that have signed peace treaties with this state they are the ones who have diplomatic ties with this state they are the ones who have military ties with this state they are the ones who have commercial ties with this state this is what gives this zionist occupation apartheid state the oxygen to exist without it it cannot exist allah subhanahu wa ta'ala confirms in the quran duribat alayhim az-zillat ayna ma thukifu illa bi hablin min allah wa hablin min an-nas allah subhanahu wa ta'ala confirms that the zionists 
They are disgraced wherever you find them. They are humiliated wherever you find them. They cannot protect themselves unless Allah protects them, but they have thrown that away or the people protect them. So Allah is telling you in Surah, in the Quran, that the Zionist state exists because they are getting support from somewhere. And we know where that somewhere is. It is the diplomatic ties, the commercial ties, the military ties, and the, the secret ties that they have with this Zionist state that allows it to exist. And this has always been the case from day one. Only now has it become apparent with each Muslim country falling over themselves to make peace treaties with the Zionist occupation state. Now it is apparent. Nobody can deny today that it is that these Arab and Muslim rulers uh, are not supporting and giving this terrorist state the oxygen and the support it needs to exist. The Zionist state is a fake state. It has no right to exist. And the, the, the Arab fake states, the Muslim fake states in that region are, what are the ones that give this Zionist state the oxygen to exist. Their destiny is tied together. The Zionist state only came into being when the Khilafah was destroyed. And these fake Muslim states in the post sykes Pico map of the Middle East only exist because of the fall of the Khilafah. The Zionist state needs the Muslim fake states and the Muslim fake states needs the Zionist state. Their destiny is tied together. So if anybody ever had any hope in any of these Arab Muslim rulers coming to your aid, well, you need to wake up and realize they are never coming to help the Muslims of Palestine. Point number two, if you had any hope in the international community, if you had any hope in the UN or the EU, Britain, France, America, to come to the aid of, the, of Palestine, then you need to realize they are not coming to help Palestine. You need to understand the role of the international community in the creation of the Zionist state and in the support of the Zionist state and the maintenance of the Zionist state. It is they who created the Zionist terrorist state. They are the ones who loaded up boats of Jewish refugees and sent them to Palestine. They are the ones who passed the resolutions to allow this state to exist. It's they that are the ones who created the Balfour Declaration that created this state. And on top of that, they criminalize any objection to this Zionist terrorist state. They have not acted in 70 years. The UN, the EU, and any of the Western states or the international community have not acted in 70 plus years to help the Muslims of Palestine. They are never going to help the Muslims of Palestine. Yet, this same international community, this same United Nations, the same France, Germany, Britain, and America, at the drop of a hat, this international community come and invaded Iraq and destroyed it, came and invaded Afghanistan and destroyed it, allows the puppet regimes to bomb one another. Yemen is being bombed for the last so many years. So when it comes to their, for their interest, at the drop of a hat, they react. So it tells you that in 70 years they haven't acted for Palestine, they are never going to act for Palestine because it is not in their interest. They, cre they created the Zionist state, they maintain the Zionist state, they support the Zionist state, and they criminalize opposition to the Zionist state. If anybody holds out any hope for the international community to help, if you think writing to your MP, if you think lobbying the government, if you think writing to the UN is going to help, you need to wake up and realize it's never going to happen. It's not happened in 70 years and it's not going to happen in another 100 years. Point number three. Point number three, my friends. We cannot carry on the way we have been continuing for the last 70 plus years. We cannot keep doing the things that we have been doing and expecting something different to happen. It's not going to happen. How long are we going to donate? And for that donation to be bombed and for those Muslims to, made harm, uh, to be made homeless. And then the following year, we have another collection and then that gets bombed. And each year we have a whip round collecting. Each year we have a whip round, we collect, and then that gets destroyed. This is untenable. This is not an option. 
How long are you going to put hope in the international community? I've demonstrated to you that they will not act on the part of Palestine, but they have acted in many other cases. They are not there for you. They are not there for me. They are not there for Palestine. And the Muslim Arab rulers, how long are you going to put hope in them? Just recently, some of these pathetic rulers have been tweeting. They have been tweeting the UN and they've been tweeting other Western rulers to do something. Rulers tweeting the UN and other rulers, women tweet, students tweet, civilians tweet, children tweet, men in government act. Men in government act. They don't tweet. They are responsible for acting. And if you are tweeting, you are just confirming that you are not in control. You are not in authority. You are not in charge. You are a puppet and you can only do what your puppet masters of the Western led world order allow you to do. So the Muslims need to wake up and realize that these rulers that resort to tweeting are never, ever going to help the Muslims of Palestine. We cannot carry on the way we have been doing for the last 70 years. We have tried a short term measures. We have tried mid term measures. We have tried this term measures. We have tried that term measures. Nothing has worked. We have used every single opportunity that the West has given us to try and solve the problem. They have told us to vote for the MP. It doesn't work. They have told us to lobby the UN. It doesn't work. They have told us to 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 speak to our leaders. It doesn't work. These methods which we have used for the last 70 plus years have not worked or never going to work. We need to think different. We need to think different and we need to think what Islam demands for us to do. So today, my brothers, my sisters, today I am appealing to you to take actions that will be practical and that will lead eventually to the resolution of this problem for once and for all. So what is the solution? We recite numerous times a day. We say, You alone do we worship and you alone do we seek help from. We do not say, We're United Nations, Nasta'een or the British Parliament, Nasta'in, or the puppet rulers, Nasta'in. We say, Iyaka Nasta'in. You alone we seek help from. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala didn't give us the UN as a solution, or the British government, or the Western government, or the puppet regimes. These are the solutions your enemies have given to you as a dead end street that will not solve your problem. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave us a solution. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave us an option. And there is only one example we have in our very recent history which worked. Yes, we have one example that worked. When Sultan Abdul Hamid, the last effective Khalifa of the Muslim world, was present, he was able to protect Palestine. He had an army that protected Palestine. And he prophesied, the day I am not here, they can take Palestine for free. And that is exactly what happened. The prescription from Islam to protect the land of Palestine is the Khilafah and the Jihad. And these are the two things we have not tried. We have tried everything else, but we have not tried Khilafah and we have not tried Jihad. And why have we not tried this? Because the West has demonized the Khilafah and the West has demonized Jihad. Because these are the two things that will solve your problems. But the West has not allowed you to use these two options. They have demonized it. And they, they fear manga. They said, oh, jihad is violence. Oh, jihad is violence. Jihad is endless war. No, my friends. What is violent and what is endless war is what we have had in Palestine for the last 70 plus years. And not just Palestine. The same is in Burma. The same is in Kashmir. The same is with the Muslims of Rohingya. The same is the Muslims of Uyghur. And the Muslims in their own countries are suffering because of the tyranny of the Western made puppet rulers in Yemen and in, 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 in Egypt and, and places like this. We are suffering because of their solutions and we are following their ways. Allah gave us Khilafah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave us the jihad. The endless violence that they talk about is what they have created. 
their illegal wars, their illegal invasions, their Abu Ghraibs, their Guantanamo Bays, their uh, uh, secret prisons, their rendering of prisoners from around the world. They are the ones who have been torturing and persecution and have brought Karbala to every corner of the Muslim world. And they are telling us our jihad is violence? No. Jihad is what creates peace. And jihad is what maintains peace. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, if you abandon jihad, Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala will humiliate you until you return back to the deen. Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala said through his messengers, if you abandon jihad, you will be humiliated until you return back to the deen. Jihad is what Sultan Abdul Hamid used to protect Palestine. Jihad is what Salah al-Din al used to create the peace and security and the stability in Palestine. The Crusaders is what created the wars and the insecurity in Palestine. And today, the Zionist occupation is what's creating the violence, what's creating the insecurity, what's creating the oppression. 70 plus years of fear mongering, keeping you away from your Khilafah, keeping you away from your Jihad, which is the only two things that can create peace in that land. So we should stop worrying about what the media uh, is saying. We should stop worrying about what the Western world is telling us what Islam is. And we need to understand Islam in the way we have been given our Islam from our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So the solution, my friends, is simple, is Khilafah and Jihad. How do we achieve that? What can we do? I've got a number of action points I'm going to detail to you now. Number one, contact the Muslim embassies and order them and ask them, why is it that we have spent millions and billions of our money to arm the armed uh, to arm the forces and they are not being used to protect the Muslims? Beseech their phone lines, beseech their emails, bombard them and humiliate them and ask them, why are you not responding to save the Muslims? Yet when America tells them to fight, they will fight their wars, but they will not fight the wars for the Muslims. Number one, contact the Muslim embassies. Number two, contact the armies directly. They are the ones that need to do the jihad. The Muslim armies are the ones that need to do the jihad. Contact the Muslim armies. You can contact them on social media. You can contact them through various channels. Contact them directly. If you have friends, relatives in the Muslim armies, contact them directly and ask them, why did you join the army? To go on parades and polish your boots? Or did you come to defend the honor of the Ummah of Muhammad? Appeal to them. Appeal to their Iman, appeal to their Taqwa and ask them, are you not going to respond to the women, to the children, to the men who are crying out for your help? You are the ones who can help. We can't. We are not in the armed forces. You are. And we are asking you to respond to the cries of the men, the women and the children. Contact the embassies, contact the armies, contact the relatives. And number four, ask your Imams and ask your masajids to ignore the fear mongering and speak the truth about the Khilafah. Speak the truth about Jihad because Allah gave you Jihad not to create war, but to create the peace by getting rid of the aggressors, by removing the occupiers, by removing the violent aggressors that have come to your land. Jihad is there to create peace. So ask your Imams to us speak the Haq from the Mimbar. And it is their job to motivate the Ummah to move in the direction of Khilafah and Jihad. And finally, or oh, point number five, ask your Imams to make dua, to make the qunut, because we need to beseech Allah. Worship Allah, pray to Allah and seek his help. And his help has come in the form of the Quran and Sunnah. The Quran and Sunnah is the help and guidance Allah has given us. And it is in the Quran and Sunnah where you will find Khilafah and Jihad. And this we need to take out of the books and we need to put into the land to create the peace where there is no peace right now. And finally, and finally, I'm appealing to you Muslims all across the world. Work, work and help the cause and help the cause and the call for the reestablishment of the promised Khilafah Rashida. Work and support the call for the promised Khilafah Rashida. There is no other option. 
there is no UN, there is no puppet leaders, there is no international community, there is no MPs, there is no charity. There is only Khilafah and Jihad. And if we do not embrace this, we will come back here again and again and again and we will keep doing the same thing over and over again and we will suffer the same humiliation over and over again. So I pray to you, my brothers and sisters, have the courage, have the taqwa to stand up with a straight back and to speak as a Muslim and work as a Muslim for the Islamic solutions. The way to establish peace is by establishing the Islamic world order, by establishing the Khilafah and using the threat of Jihad to make the peace in the Muslim world. With that, I leave you, my friends. And with that, I hope you ponder on these words and I hope you take these six points I have given to you. Contact the embassies, contact the armies, contact your relatives, contact your imams. Speak to the misajids to do the qunud, to do the dua. And you yourselves help and support the cause to reestablish the promised Khilafah Rashida. So with that, I end. وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد والحمد لله رب العالمين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته